Hello everyone, welcome to my channel again. So today we will learn about tetrapod limb development. So before going into the details, first we will learn about the basic anatomy of a typical tetrapod limb. So first the positional information needed to construct a limb has to function in a three dimensional coordinate system. The first dimension is the proximal distal axis or shoulder to finger or hip to toe direction. The second dimension is the anterior posterior axis or thumb to pinky direction. Third dimension is the dorsoventral axis or knuckle to palm direction. So all these three dimensions have to be proper established to form a perfect tetrapod limb. This is a figure showing the skeletal patterns of a limb. This is a human arm. This is a chicken wing and this is a horse foreleg. The humerus region is called stylopod, radius ulna region is called zygopod and the digits are called the autopod. So these three terms are important. Then coming to the overview of limb development. So first cells from lateral plate mesoderm migrate and proliferate within the presumptive limb field forming the limb mesenchyme. So the cells which form the limb are the mesenchymal cells which are derived from the lateral plate mesoderm and they accumulate in the region which forms the limb that is the presumptive limb field. Now these mesenchymal cells they proliferate and they form a progress shown which is covered by ectoderm with the thickening at the distal tip that is called the AER or apical ectodermal ridge. So this is a uh, figure of a limb bud and we can see here that this region is called the progression and the thickening at its distal tip is called the AER. Now, FGF8 from AR antagonized flank derived retinoic acid initiate a positive loop with mesenchyme signaling FGF10 went to promote limb bud outgrowth. So AR secret FGF8 and the flank derived retinoic acid they are antagonistic to each other and the mesenchyme secret FGF10 and went and together all these paracrine factors they create a positive feedback loop which initiate the limb bud and maintain the limb bud outgrowth. Now FGF8 specifies the posterior mesenchyme into JPA or zona polarizing activity which secretes sonic hedger to set up anterior posterior axis. So this posterior mesenchymal region is called the zona polarizing activity we secrete sonic hedgehog and it is responsible for anterior posterior axis formation. The skeletogenesis controlled by Turing type model through morphogen and webbed digit apoptosis occurs via BMP. Differential expression of Hox gene along each axis occur and modification of which cause evolution of fin to fingers. Next, coming to the Hox chain specification for limb skeleton identity. So there are uh, 9 to 13 group of Hox gene paralogs and their expression at different regions form the limb skeletal identity. The Hox 9 and 10 gene are expressed in the stylopod region. The Hox 11 is expressed in zygopod region and Hox 12 and 13 are expressed in autopod region. Now mutation in Hox genes uh, will result in different anomalies in the skeletal uh, structure of the limb like mutation in Hox 9 and 10 will result in loss of stylopod that is there will be no humerus or femur. Mutation in Hox 11 will result in loss of zygopod there will be no radius ulna or tibia fibula and mutation in Hox 12 and 13 will result in 
loss of autopod that is there will be no digits no fingers here this is an experiment where the hof 11 mutation has result in loss of zygopod in this uh, in this uh, four limb while the hox while the ho hox 11 gene has formed a wild type phenotype here in human the hox t13 homozygous mutation results in fused digits so that's all uh, for this part and the reference is developmental biology gilbert 11th edition chapter 19 Thank you for watching this video, and if you have any queries, please uh, comment in the comment section below. And if you like my video, please hit the like button. Thank you.